here with the door open. What? Nothing, my live stream connection. All right. This is what the upper shock mount came to be. Um, I had a really nice conversation. I've met uh, a really cool guy on Instagram this past week. The gentleman I've been talking to has a custom shop in, I believe, Louisiana. And we've been talking back and forth. It's kind of cool because that's one thing that's a beneficial, uh, uh, a benefit from answering all the comments uh, that I receive on any different platform and communicating with people on, on TikTok is you don't necessarily know where the conversation is going to go and what kind of information you're going to get and what kind of people you're going to meet. Which is kind of one of the, the idea that he gave me originally was something that I was going to do already. And that is putting a shock mount in the center here and then going down on an angle here and here and kind of angle two shocks out and down. And while that would work, um, and it's probably the easiest thing to do, I'm not gonna do it, actually. So rather than getting involved in mounting them there, I decided to mount them up on the front side. Way up here, I'm gonna integrate the bottom shock mount into the axle bracket. And then long story short, that's where this upper cross member, I'm making a new upper cross member for the top shock mounts. And you'll see it in position here in a second, but this is an inch and a half quarter wall that I'm gonna tie my upper shock brackets to. So, this was one idea. And this is, this is an easy one, this is a good one, which is what I was originally thinking about doing anyway. But there's two things against this idea. One is, it's another piece of hardware that I have to remove from this cross member if I ever want to get into the pumpkin. So the way this is designed is this unbolts so we can service the rear if ever need be. So at the moment we got to take the bags out and then take the cross member off. If the shocks were here that would just be one more piece of hardware that I would have to take off. Two, if I mount the shocks here they will work. They will still do their job, I suppose. But in my head, I feel like the shock needs to be closer to the rear center line to get a better performance out of it or get more performance out of it. So if I mount them back here, we're probably a good 12 inches off the center line of the axle tube. So now I have now put a new cross member in up on the front side and I'm going to put my shocks up on the front side of the axle tube. It'll get me really close to the axle center line and I can run the shock more vertical up and down and I feel like ultimately that would probably give me the best performance. Kind of like a tractor trailer. I've seen the tractor trailers where they have the airbag and then the shock really close and the shock is almost vertical up and down. There's no angle left or right. And the way that I see it is you would get the most performance this way rather than like on an angle. The only thing that I can see as far as like an added benefit running the shock on an angle like this is it kind of acts like a pannered bar per se and keeps the rear from shuttering uh, side to side. Do, 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 do. The entire project. <laughs> yes, angle. Mad Max, that's okay. We're all we're all gonna learn together. A lot of this is just trial by fire for me. This is more like a helper bag setup. 
Uh, never you mind. Sort of. Yes. Um, basically. Load comes straight up and down. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I would say 90, I would say 95% of shock load is up and down. And then I'm thinking like, so in my mind, the way my mind's working through it is think of like if you go through a pothole, right? And you go through a pothole and sometimes that pothole is really bad and you can feel the whole like back end or the front end even shake side to side. But if you're in a truck and you hit it on the back end, that back end will shake. So I'm thinking, you know, a small percentage of angle in them to kind of help with that shutter side to side might be beneficial. The, uh, the shocks that were on this were never actually properly done. They almost seemed like pointless. There was such an extreme angle from the factory location to how this was lowered before. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm lost because you still have leaf springs. It's an oddball setup. I will give you that. I promise you that. Yes, the triangle theory, yes. Triangles are pretty strong. So if you angle them, you're going to get the strength from that. Semi-trailer angled a little bit. Shock needs to be, like you said, straight up and down at a 15 degree. Yeah, it doesn't need much of an angle. So I'm trying to set up the leaf spring or the, the bag placement. The bag placement and the shock placement in the optimum position this way here if he ever wants to go down the road of getting the four link everything else will be done so the truck came in static lowered with a five seven drop it had a flip kit done in the rear i added leaf uh shackles in the rear to give me another additional two inches so the truck laid out in the rear had about nine inches of drop which tucks the 22 inch tires Another thing that we're not doing with this truck is we're not trying to lay frame. If we're trying to lay frame, it's a ton of work. You have to get up inside the bed. You have to cut the center of the bed out. You have to do wheel tubs and do the crazy C-notch in the frame and then cut the bed up to make all that space for it to drop down all the way to the frame. Uh, the front is the same thing. In order to lay frame in the front, you got to do wheel tubs or uh, new inner fenders and all kinds of crazy work. That was never the intention. The intention was to just have a low truck and then the ability to have a little bit of air ride management to give him lift when he needs it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So yes, I put the truck all the way down to the lowest possible position with the leaf springs and then we're going to use the airbags to give him the lift that he needs. So leaf springs are given um, the axle location, is keeping the axle location where it needs to be and then the airbags will be suspension. It will ride probably pretty rough in the rear unless there's like weight added to the back. Um, it'll be, I'm kind of curious to see what happens. I had also thought about taking a couple springs out of the leaf pack. Um, but I really don't want to do that either. Here and then put a bracket and just do a big bolt up there. Do a big five eighths bolt for that whole thing. It's a quarter wall, so that's half inch plate. That would have moved. That would be really simple. Do a spacer. That would keep things really simple up there. I have to 
jack it up and make sure that we got full travel out of the shocks though. Pretty sure these are the ones I'm using. Actually, I would, in order to do it properly, I would have to drill a hole, put a 5 8 bolt through. And weld everything. That would be the proper thing to do. <clears throat> Dad. Huh? Is NOS a real thing? Uh huh. Nitrous. NOS. 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 NOS is short for nitrous, nitrous oxide system. That's all it is. Is it legal? No. Yeah. Oh, you can run it. I thought I saw it in the movie. They said it was illegal. Maybe how much he ran. I don't know. The mount is very crude for now. It at least gets me up in the position that I need and where they need to be. So don't mind the crudity of the mount. That will likely change. I already have an idea of how I want to make them look. As long as I can tell myself that they're in the right spot. So it's they're in a tied position as far as low with the bottom of the drum. So they are really low, but I'm using a full-size shock from an 86 C10. I'm using, so one thing I'm trying to do is keep replacement parts relatively easy to find and get. So I pulled the front shock from an 86 C10, and I'm trying to use the rear shock from an 86 C10 as well. So this way here, the owner of the truck can go in to any parts store and say, I need shocks from an 86 C10 and most likely get what he needs and they will fit. So I'm trying to limit how many custom part numbers I use for the truck. That's kind of what it looks like from the rear of the vehicle. You can see I got the compressor sitting up in there. I had the owner of the truck come by today to come check everything out. And is really happy with the way things are going. So that's kind of like the rear look. Right now the truck is hypothetically aired up all the way. Yeah, Mr. Fix-It 405, yeah, it's the white dually project. I'm talking shock mounts. I've been working on the bottom shock mounts today. And the reason I jumped on the live real quick is because I've been staring at it for like the past hour, so I figured I'd have everybody else stare at it for a couple of minutes. So that's basically aired out. Don't mind the roll pan. The roll pan's getting replaced. So what I want to do is I'm going to run a plate just basically how I did the sandwich here. I'm going to do a three-quarter inch plate on the side here, down to here, and one on this side. So this will be about three-quarters of an inch plus in thickness with plate. And then I'm going to probably drill starting with a larger hole at the top. Probably three holes, one, two, three, or vice versa. 
and then I'm gonna, you know, plate it in here and kind of taper the front. Nice thing about it being a super long shock is I have about an inch and a half of extra travel down to allow bottom out. You can kind of see the marks on that one right there in front of you. I had some reference marks drawn on it. Um, so I have an inch and a half travel extra down and I have two inches of extra travel up. So I get full travel plus some, which is, which is good for something like this. It's just because of how high that axle is tucked up in there. It just looks really strange. So there's how the top mount came out. I could have spaced these out a little bit farther to kind of help me out with the placement down here. But overall, it worked out pretty good. I have a slight angle in the shock. You can see the reference marks I was making. And then I'm going to beef up the plates. Let's see here. Ugh. I'll tell you what, I'm getting, getting good at crawling around here on the floor. So for my idea on the plate is because of how much lower it dropped down. Now this is kind of too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie another plate in up here all the way at the top. Fill this void in up here and then go from this point up at the very top. You can kind of barely see it with the lighting. But this is the top of my axle bracket. So then I'm going to go from the top of my axle bracket through everything into kind of like down here. So draw through the phone. So then I'll cut all this out. And there'll be a nice taper from here to here. Same thing with the back. I'm going to add a piece from here. My axle plate goes in here somewhere. So I will add a piece from like here to here. Something like that. And then what I'm thinking about doing is maybe I'll start with smallers. But maybe drill one, two, three or something holes in it. And kind of give it a design like that. Weld everything up. Grind everything down. And. It'll look super beefy. I was using this to go across the frame. At the bottom. Of the shock mounts. To make sure. It was at the bottom of the drums. I wanted to see exactly how low it was. So I popped this up on there. And uh, used it as a straight edge. Yes? You're gonna ask me about the mini bike, aren't you? No. What? I was gonna pull. I was you were, weren't you? No, I was yeah, gonna... you were. I was gonna... Don't lie to me. I was gonna ask Paul to lie inside most of your stuff, but then I realized that you're so online <laughs> and that, you know, like maybe maybe you're gonna get off soon and then they're gonna ride the mini bike. Yep, yeah, there it is. They can't ride they can't ride the mini bike with crocs or anything like that. No flip flops, no crocs. Get the jigsaw out of the uh, out of the box. Now that was my son. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up, and uh, yeah, they want the neighbors to ride it. So I gotta watch the two neighbor kids. They haven't been on it yet. So I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, go focus on the kiddos and pay attention to them for a little bit. I just wanted to sh kind of shoot the shit with the shock mounts and kind of get some different opinions on, on what was happening there. Uh, Aiden, yeah. get the battery off the drill over on the table. And then the blades for the, uh, for the jigsaw should be in there as well. All right, everybody. Get out there, go challenge your build. 
I challenge mine, and uh, you guys have a good afternoon.